You're gonna be just fine. I just talk. You know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit. Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me as always is the ever-quotable Jay. It's really real! <laughs> and the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Hi. Oh, I don't know if I saved it, but I guess I sent it to you, Kenneth. Someone put the twisted T-can as, as a Pyramid Head's sword. <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Best thing oh I've god, seen. Oh my god, the amount of memes that has came out with all the bullshit that has went on in the past couple of weeks has been superb. <laughs> memes are the best part about what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've been laughing so hard at some of this shit I've seen. 100%. Uh, so, Jay, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty great. Uh, we've had a number of people quit at work, um, and that's caused my boss to realize that if he loses me, he'd be fucked, so he raised my pay by $2 recently. Awesome. <laughs> Always good. Uh, Kenneth, what about you? Uh, working all the time. Got the kids here a lot. Um, doing really good at my grilling skills, which has made me super confident. Like, I grilled steak today, and apparently everybody loved it. And it was the first time I've ever grilled steak before in my life. Nice. Good job. Very nice. Um, my life's a hellscape. Uh, so, sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So has that anybody been doing anything interesting, Jay? Anything interesting with you? Um, I wouldn't say interesting. Uh, as I've told you both outside of the show, I've started experimenting with uh, marijuana, and that's always fun. It's uh, good times. My, I'm pro week. My, my next plan for tomorrow is to get high, hook up my PlayStation VR, and play Star Wars Squadrons in VR while high. Nice. And I think that's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you smoking yep, weed so right now? Like, Jesus. No, I, say, he's got no, that I've got a cough. fucking... I got the winter phlegm that I always get. Oh. Sounds like that reefer cough to me. Because oh. you know, I, I can't smoke anything. Smoking bothers right. me, so I just eat edibles. Our next, oh, re okay. our next review is going to be reefer madness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. Uh, Kenneth, what about you besides uh, grilling? Uh, other than that, I mean finished up the third season of Cobra Kai, which is fucking awesome and yes. pissed me off at the same time. Cobra um, Kai season three was great. I agree. Yeah, and but, then uh, me and Shine have been watching Vikings. Other than that, I gotta, I gotta say something to people. Uh, can y'all wait at least a week after a show drops before you start dropping your memes? Like I, I like you're spoiling stuff that I don't even realize you're spoiling because you just have to start memeing right away. It's like yeah, we don't even get a couple of days. It's like within an hour of it dropping, like memes it's were true. coming out. Listen, the day it came out, I watched all but two episodes, and I still had stuff spoiled for me by memes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was like, this is luckily, ridiculous. Luckily, I don't get on social media that often, as you both know, so not a damn thing got ruined for me. I'm going to start forwarding. Season four, I'm watching day one, and I'm then forwarding all the memes I see to Kenneth. He okay. should be punished with us. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Hell, I don't got to the point now where it's just like with again going back to all the crazy shit. Aside from the memes, dude, I don't even fucking like getting on Facebook anymore. I'm like, we're all fucked. We're all gonna die. <laughs> I mean, so I don't even get on Facebook anymore. That's fair. Um, I have. I don't think I've really been doing much of anything. Yesterday, I spent all day. I, I watched three really old movies. I watched uh, The Ventures of Robin Hood from 1938, which. Holds up super well. That movie is a lot of fun. You talking about the one with Errol Flynn? Yes. That movie's fucking awesome. Who apparently him and the director did not like each other, and part of that was because Errol Flynn was married to the director's ex-wife. And also, from everything I've always read about Errol Flynn, he was extremely arrogant. Um. Yeah. Uh. The guy who played um, <clears throat> Guy. The guy who played Guy. Um, mm -hmm. which is Basil Rathbone, who, you know, is the best Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, he was like, I, I like that guy, but he's lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I watched The Most Dangerous Game from 1932, which I think would be an interesting one for us to cover just because of Kenneth's, like, survival thing. Uh, I mean, the movie's only, like, like, an hour ice long. The ice version. The ice? Okay. Oh, I, I get your joke now. Uh, but I think you meant Ice Cube. 
No. Ice T is in Surviving the Game. Yeah, Surviving the Game, which is a, a take on the most dangerous game. Oh, I thought you were talking about Bucker the song, in most it. dangerous game. Yeah, Surviving the Game was a badass movie. Oh, yeah, no, I was talking about the original one from 1932. It's only an no, hour long. I'm saying I like the, I've never seen that one, but I like the one with Ice T. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's really good. And then I watched uh, Little Caesar, which is a gangster movie uh, from 1931. It was also extremely good. Yeah, speak, it was speaking of the thing about my, my thing about survivalists, I was f- trying to find something to just bullshit around and watch today on Hulu and uh, came across this show called Alone. And, uh, you know, it's one of those reality TV shows, kind of like Naked and Afraid, where you take a person and stick them out in the middle of fucking nowhere and see how long they can survive. And uh, ten guys go out there. And what really got my attention is one of the guys that I follow on YouTube is on the show. Oh, that's funny. interesting. Yeah, I'm. I'm also. I'm gonna try to keep up with what I watch this year. Uh, try to actually track what I watch, uh, whether it's first time watches or not. Uh, just That's to kind of. Yeah, everyone does it, and I feel like I need to get on the bandwagon. I think it's time. It's fun. It is. So I'm doing it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be involved in that. Uh, but without further ado, people, we are here uh, in celebration. Our buddy, our friend of the show, Alex Edwards from the Skeleton Crew and Married with Children podcast, um, him and his friends got together and made a Friday the 13th fan film. Now, how this happened was, uh, some of y'all may who know Alex know that uh, when him and his wife got married, they got married on Friday the 13th. They had his friend dressed up as Jason um, for pictures. Well, they decided uh, this past anniversary that since it fell on Friday the 13th again, they were going to have their friend jar- dress up as Jason and, and do new pictures. And they did. And, and while they were doing new it... New pictures or nude pictures? New, Ooh, as in brand new. new. Pictures. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm still waiting for the Alex Edwards sex tape, which would have... Yeah, I was just about to say, if they did nude pictures, I, I'm fixing to pick up my phone right now and message Alex. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um... But, uh, and they started joking about, uh, since they're doing these pictures and they've got his buddy dressed up as Jason, they should film something kind of for fun. So they filmed a kind of a couple of of things for fun. And, um, the scene where they're like in the graveyard talking about him dying, their buddy dying and all that stuff. That's kind of the, the, the scene. Cause they didn't want to like film someone getting killed in the graveyard cause they felt it was kind of disrespectful. Um, so they kind of just w- did like this, like little backstory thing for fun. And they're like, oh, let's go film in Blair's diner. And, you know, they did some other shots that are from the original Friday the 13th all for fun. And then they decided, you know, let's just make a movie. Like it doesn't have to be anything spectacular. It's just fun doing this. Let's do it. So they kind of came up with a story that matched what they had already shot and put it all together just to have fun. This is not a fan film like some of those other ones that popped up everywhere after Don't Hike Alone, where there is a budget. These are like professional people, um, or at least professional in the sense that they have experience in this. Uh, Alex had had not even really made YouTube videos before. Um, This whole thing was shot on phones. Um, But they just wanted to do it to have fun, and this whole thing was made just because a group... This would be kind of like if me, Jay, and Kenneth hung out for a weekend and decided, fuck it, let's let's make a short movie. You know, because we would only... If we only had a weekend, we're not making a full hour-long movie. Uh, right. But it would be the same thing. We don't know what we're doing. Uh, we're just using what we have. No budget. Just our, our wits in a small, short period of time and having fun. And that's what this is. Uh, so going into this, uh, just know that this is not a high budget. There was no Kickstarter. It's literally the definition of no budget. Correct. This is a bunch. This is a bunch of friends filming stuff for fun. So the movie is called Friday the Thirteenth Part Nine. Obviously, it's it, it takes place after Jason takes Manhattan, uh, and it's called Nine Lives. Um, the story is basically, uh. They're a group of friends, and one of them, their brother, died a long time ago. And they, the sister, actually saw him be killed by Sackhead Jason, which is pretty dope. 
and a recent string of murders has made them think that maybe Jason is back and their friend other friend Alex who who, who is Alex uh, doesn't really believe them and they go out into the woods and they kind of they find a shrine for like Jason's mother and everything it's got the head it's got the uh, sweater uh, mm-hmm. and then Jason just kind of comes and kills all of them so it's it's just kind of a fun enjoyable thing uh, but with that being said Let's talk about this movie. Let's talk about what we liked. Let's talk about what we didn't like and all of that. Uh, so I guess first round we're going to do, let's talk about something we actually liked in the movie. Um, I'll go first just so y'all can have a second to think about it. I really liked all the nods to the franchise, especially the silliest one of them all. Alex made sure to put in someone on the toilet who didn't wipe their ass. <laughs> That is something you really just don't get a lot of uh, when when the when people are making these movies, um, you know, and they have to take it serious because it's a serious thing. They kind of forget nods like that, and so to see a nod like that just really made me smile. And I even called Alex out, and I was like, "Alex, your pants were still around your thighs. Who shits like that?" And he was like, "No, no, no. Th- those were the shorts. It was fine, and I just didn't want to accidentally show my dick." <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, Kenneth, what's something you, cu- you you liked about it? Dude, honestly, I, I, I had fun with the whole thing, to be honest with you. I liked all of it. I really liked how Alex would throw in nods to other movies also. You know, like at the very beginning when you see the two people walking and they've got the masks on from Halloween 3. Yeah, I think one of those... I. The guy who who's in that is I can't tell if it was Jerry Vietta or Alex Edwards, who I was on. I want to say it was Alex, you know, but I'm not absolutely sure. But yeah, that was good. Um, I really like the scene at the end where the guy that plays Jason was chasing himself. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that, that was fantastic. I was enjoying every minute of that. Because I was like, I was sitting there and I was watching I was watching it. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, who's playing Jason? And then the tattoos th- gave it away. And I was like, oh, this is fucking great. This is so good. Especially the way that Alex shot the whole thing. You know, towards the end where, they're, where, they're, where he's chasing himself. That, that shit was great. Um, and then my favorite thing above all is the line that fucking Alex threw in when he sees Jason that's straight out of the crow. You know what I'm saying? It's when it's that same line that uh, T-Bird gives right before he blows up in the car and he sees Brandon Lee standing there and he's like, this is the really real world. There's no, There ain't no coming back. That's straight from the crow. Oh, wow. I didn't that even get whole, that reference. Yeah, that whole thing was from the crow. And I was like... God, Alex, no wonder I love you, man. <laughs> he puts some damn good shit into his movies. And I really like Alex's house. Oh, yeah. One of the things I was going to bring up is I really enjoyed looking around Alex's house and kind right. of looking. And, and, you know, I want to say other fan films. Do this. Find your friend who's the biggest horror collector and film in their house because it doesn't matter if acting's bad. It doesn't matter if you don't care what's going on. When you have a background like that, you can just sit there and look at the background the entire time, and it's enjoyable. Right. I was sitting there trying to find everything, and I was sitting there thinking to myself the whole time, I'm like, God damn, how many t-shirts does that motherfucker have? That's true. Because I, I never see Alex wearing the same t-shirt. That's also true. I was looking Even for like stuff that I had sent. Like I sent him the um, Psycho 2 soundtrack on vinyl, and I was just like, I wonder if, he, I wonder if I'm going to see that. Where's that at? This is kind of funny, but uh, Jay, what did you like about the movie? Uh, I really liked the soundtrack. <laughs> Every, uh, all the music was really well done. It was really well placed. Um, I really liked that a lot. That's probably what stood out the most to me. Is that they used Friday the Thirteenth music for a Friday the Thirteenth fan film? Well, yeah, but I mean, all of it. Like it's it's just. It's in the right Alex places, edited, and it Alex makes edited sense. it very well. And it, yeah, and it's it's edited really well. I don't really know how to, to elaborate on that. I know it's uh, not as much as you guys had to say, but it's uh, well, I it's mean, just something I, that stood out to me. I was going to say, I think it kind of, I think me and Jerry are kind of in a little bit of a different box because we know Alex personally. 
You know what I'm saying? A lot more than you do. So it's, I think it might be a little different, but it's I don't the same. know anything about them. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So me and me and Jerry can sit here and go on about like, like I said, like it's finally nice, you know, cause I've seen many pictures of the outside of Alex's house. It's nice to see the inside of it for a change. He does have you a know? nice house and he has very attractive friends. Uh, yeah, I was sent him a message. I sent him a message after I got done, and I was like, "Dude, the cat ears, man, the girl with the cat ears." <laughs> and he thought that was funny. I I text I texted him and I was like, "Thanks for the cleavage." Yeah, right. I mean, well, so. I I second that, <laughs> or third it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean. I think uh, going kind of piggybacking off what Jay said, I mean, Alex edited the movie very well. I honestly think that for it to be something that Alex does not do on a regular basis, I think with a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, he probably could do the real deal. Yeah. I'd say this. Yeah. That's a, the cinematography was really good too. The, yeah, the angles of the cameras, uh, it doesn't, uh, even at night and for being shot on films, the, the editing and everything, it was, it was all visible, which, a lot of the times when you get independent movies in general, not even just fan films, but independent movies in general, nighttime scenes are usually lit really terribly, either because they don't have the, the money for lighting equipment to make the nighttime scenes bright, or they try and do the natural light thing with not enough natural light, uh, and it comes out terrible. But everything was really visible. The The camera angles chosen were great. The way the, the where the cameras were set up in each scene, I, uh, I, I'd say that was really well done. Yeah, yeah, Alex did a fucking fantastic job. Yeah, the one thing I will make fun of is is I know they did a lot of this uh, filming on phones. Um, turn your autofocus off, guys. Uh, <laughs> the 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 focusing like changing and uh, like in the in the middle of a scene, everything just goes blurry for a second and readjust. And it happens a lot. Like, if there's one thing that, like, I would say, next time you, this is what you have to improve on, it's you gotta, you gotta look at that focusing problem because that happened a lot. Yeah, my my negative thing is 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 like certain instances with the audio where I'll just be like, Alex, man, you need to invest in wireless mics, dude, lapel mics to go to hook up to your phones. I don't know if they do that. I imagine they do. And, uh, yeah, you got to invest in those, bro. <laughs> Fair. Uh, Jay, you got something negative? Was... Or, Kenneth, you got more? Oh, I was just going to say, cause there, was sometimes, <laughs> there was sometimes where I just couldn't hear what they were saying. Fair. Uh, Jay? Um, so, I, I tried to keep two minds about this film. Uh, the first being, like you said at the beginning, this is just a bunch of friends with their phones and some leftover Halloween shit, having fun. And in that regard, the movie is a lot of fun. But as someone who doesn't know these people, um, who's not just a, a friend trying to support them, someone who's watching this, uh, well, for the purpose of review, but also who would be otherwise watching it for the purpose of entertainment, um, it kind of solidifies the reason I don't really like fan films in general. Uh, nobody can act. So I apologize to everybody, but nobody can act. Uh, <laughs> uh, and sometimes that, that took me out of it. Uh, that, that probably my biggest complaint. Like I said, it, like you said, it's, uh, it's a bunch of people just having fun. So I don't want to rail on it too hard. It, it's stupid to rail on it. They're not like trying to make money out of it. They didn't go to a bunch of people into donating a bunch of money to film, film something and ended up terrible. So there's really no reason for me to riff on it too, too much. Um, it was fun to watch and it was fun for what it was. But it's I just I I have a hard time with with fan films in general, um, and the acting is is one of the biggest reasons. That's fair. Uh, the, I have like in a real sense, I do have a problem a bit with the story. A, a lot of stuff like like the first half of the movie is a lot of build up to the story, and then you kind of stall in the middle where they're at the drive-in and the 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 daughter gets killed and then you go into the halloween party and that's when everyone starts dying um and while i like the ending of of alex coming and uh after we thought he was dead coming back and hitting jason and uh big titty kitty gets away um that is a 
wonderful name. <laughs> uh, so hot. But, uh, like, there's just a part of me that goes, did we, like, we, we kind of forgot all about the story for the sake of the kills at this point. There's no real, like, the, our final girl is this kitty girl who we had never seen before. It wasn't anyone who was in the family who talked about Jason killing all their friends, all of that. I, at that point, you should have just killed her, too. She just had Jason kill everyone and just show that there's not always a final girl. Like, everyone should have just fucking died. I would that's I what would I was have, hoping. Yeah, that's I would have changed the ending. Actually. That's actually what I was expecting. And then the other, I mean, I've got a, another issue that really, like, with the music that Alex chose to go at the end of the movie, when she's, like, driving off and everything, I was expecting there to be uh, one last jump scare. And there wasn't. And I was just like, because because me and Cheyenne were both expecting you know somebody to pop up out of the back seat, yeah, and I was just like okay, and and then knowing Alex, I was like I wonder who it is in the back seat. It was it yeah. was the bucket from the ghost of Michael Myers that he made twenty years ago. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, it could have been, I was I was expecting a nod to something like that or whatever, and there wasn't. And I was like, damn it, man. <laughs> yeah, but I think the cool thing about watching this. Is it really made me go, huh, I-, I could get a group of friends together and go out and, and make, maybe not an hour-long film, but I could go out and make a 30-minute a, a film on no money, just using whatever resources I have, and, and it could turn out decent and put it out. Like, obviously, it's it's not going to, you know, be this crazy thing that pays for these people who were in horror movies in the 80s and haven't done anything since, you know, just to have that name in there. Um, but I could go <laughs> out and... Throw a little shade at some fan films there, Jerry? A <laughs> little bit. Uh, I had to get a little vengeance. Um, but just in general, like, like this made me want to actually go and do... Like, I think it would be fun to get a bunch of people together for, like, a weekend and shoot a, a, a short film... Because watching this, I'm like, I could do this. Let's do it. Let's uh, get together again. I'll come down again, and we'll uh, we'll make the Kill the Cast short film. Yeah, we could. I think it would be really fun. Now, the one thing that I would want in our short film, though, is... More nudity. More nudity. Definitely. There was no nudity in this, um, and, and that made me s- sad. Kenneth has an uh, infinite supply of hot chicks. Yeah, he just has them in his closet. Hopefully <laughs> one day they'll escape. <laughs> I'll stay in the basement too. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> also, I want to point out, Alex cannot dance, and his wife is a professional dance instructor. I just want to point that out. Uh, I'm assuming I was laughing at that also, and I was also laughing at his attempt to do the dance moves from Crispin Glover in Part Four. Yes. <laughs> I was laughing at that. Like, like I honestly have to say, man, overall, dude, I, I, I had a great time. I was laughing the entire hour. I was just like, oh, my God, that's great. That's great. That's hilarious. I mean, it was just, it, I was, I, I had such a blast watching this, dude. I was actually surprised that I had so much fun watching it. I was worried when I, when, right before I watched it, because right before I watched it, I was watching another independent film that did have a budget um not a big budget or anything but but someone who's been doing youtube for a long time they know how to edit they know how to film uh they have done stuff in the past that i like and um it w- i got 30 minutes into this hour long movie and uh it was so fucking bad just in every conceivable way that I was like, oh, we are not reviewing this because it will literally just be me saying, maybe this isn't for me, but this is fucking awful. It feels like they didn't even try, and they're just saying, oh, no, 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 that's the funny part. That's why it looks like it's so funny, and I'm like, no, you rated a Spirit Halloween and still chose to get the cheapest shit. <laughs> Like, it was just so fucking bad. Is this a movie you were telling us about the other day, Messenger? Yes. Um, And and this person sells this fucking movie. So I was just like, no, I would would pay for Alex's movie. 
I would not pay for this one. So, <clears throat> and so we were going to review it, me and Jay were, and then I was like, dude, I can't even finish this fucking movie. It's so fucking bad. And then I was like, oh God, what if Alex is this bad? No way, I, like, no, like, I, the humor, there's got to be a different type of humor, so it can't be that bad. Um, and then I watched Alex's, and I was like, oh, thank fucking Christ, this, like, this movie is better than the, the movie that was done by someone who's semi-professional and some, and has ties to a, a certain low-budget movie studio that's been around since, you know, the 70s. Um... And see, the thing about it, I, I, I went into it being nervous about watching it because, you know, I, uh, Alex is my friend. And, you know, you never want to just go in and completely just shit on something that somebody does that they put effort into. So I was nervous about possibly having to do that. But at the same time, I was like, there's no fucking way. It's Alex. And even if Alex is trying to do something that's amusing, he still puts his heart into it. You know, because I, I mean, and especially if you go back and for you and me, Jerry, if we go back and we listen to Skeleton Crew episodes and stuff like that, and all the time that Alex has put into those productions, all the time that Alex has put into productions that you and me have both been on, Married with Children podcast, all the rest of that, I, I was just like, there's no way that this is going to suck. Yeah. And, and, I, then, and then and then I was right. It didn't. Yeah. And now let's talk about that shot with the with Jason standing high up in the trees. So Alex told me he was doing the dream sequence. Uh, yeah, when he was standing on like that. <laughs> I, I'm so glad that ended up being a dream sequence. I was like, "What the fuck is he doing up there?" Yeah, well, Alex told me he was like, "We were so worried that that thing was going to break, <laughs> that like we were kind of debating on not doing it." And dude was just like, "No, fuck it, I'm gonna do it." And he got up there and he did it, and I was just like. I would have done it. I would have told Alex to go fuck himself. I would have been like, Alex, you put on the fucking mask and get up I'd, there. I'd get up there. No, fuck uh, that. Some of the places that he shot at, I'm like, like with the cabin, you know what I'm saying? That had the... That oh, had graffiti the, uh, cabin? Yeah. I was like, we need to go to Jersey. We're, we don't have shit like that down here. Yeah. I, I, I want to know how we found graffiti cabin. Like, like, that was just a really cool looking place. Like, you could film... Hell, let's do a Night of the Demons fan film in there. Fucking right, that, man. That place was and dope the, as shit. It was, yeah, yeah, all the scenery was good actually. All the locations chosen were were really good. I mean, and the drive-in was great. And and uh, you know, and I'm and I'm kind of trying to stay stay away from the ones that we all know and love. You know what I'm saying? That came from the first movie. So uh, all the ones that he did that weren't in the first movie, they were all still really great locations. With the, you know, I mean, and not going in on his house anymore. So, yeah, you, I, I was just like, man, this is, these are some really great spots that he chose. I mean, I got to give full on credit for that as well. Yeah. And I, I like, I like the way he did some of the kills knowing that he didn't have, you know, the budget, the money, the, the, the special effects, the talent to do these kills his workaround for them were pretty fun like that like you start off with the head crushing kills of them in the mask what a <laughs> fucking smart idea right crush their oh, heads yeah. and masks the, uh, those are like old school we have to hide the effects style kills i actually as as cheesy as they were for being no budget they were they i really really appreciated them um because they're like old school horror filmmaking before we had people like Tom Savini coming up with fucking mechanics, mechanical ways to do things. You know, you had to, you wanted to show a knife in somebody, you had to figure out how to shoot it in an angle that would let you show that without actually doing it. And that's the kind of stuff he does throughout the film, which is, I just really appreciated. Yeah. My favorite was when, uh, when Jason was killing the person in the woods and uh, with the, uh, I think it was a machete and, and the machete goes into the body and the and the angle is beside them so you know you can clearly tell that the machete's in the ground and not in their body but it still was really good yeah and then he pulled it up and there's no blood on the machete <laughs> yeah, yeah it was great and then the very next shot is blood all over the machete i was uh, yeah that that was yeah. really good oh i, I like love that. the axe kill at the end right. where jason throws the fucking axe and it's just kind of like 
sitting on homeboy's chest. Yeah, that was really good. That one, but that was right Jason killing himself because that was the same actor. <laughs> yeah. So that was masturbation kill. That was my that was my favorite thing, dude. I loved it. The way that was shot, though, um, with the lighting and everything, it reminded me of my favorite Friday film, Part Seven, because the woods from the way it was lit, you know, where you can only see what was up close and everything and behind it looked black. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the way it looked in Part Seven. Yeah, I I I liked. Uh, I liked watching Alex die. <laughs> that was fun. He got he got the little uh, I don't know what that tool is the little claw for for like tilling soil. Oh, the gardening tool. Yeah, he got fucked up. And I, I I can just picture Alex looking at this guy wearing a Jason mask, going, "God, you cannot see well. Please do not hit me in the fucking face. I have a really pretty face. Don't fuck this up for me." <laughs> I was waiting on him to start screaming, he's killing me. Oh, that would have been <laughs> pretty so funny, actually. I was so waiting for it. Um, I liked uh, him killing the, the, the daughter, I guess, the short blonde hair girl, uh, doing yeah. the thumbs in the eyes for that one. That was pretty gnarly. Um, he just kind of slammed one bitch's head in and then dragged her down the stairs. Uh, how did his wife, Alex's wife die? I think that was who got drugged down the stairs. No, I thought that was the mother that got her head slammed. I thought the and... cat girl was his wife. No, 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 no. The girl in the, uh, like, fedora, who looks much like the cat girl. Uh, also, um, Hispanic looking with big titties. The one he played pool with. Oh. Um. Shit. <laughs> how did she die? I can't remember how she, she died. She got a knife to the, to the head, didn't no, she? No, that was the blonde girl that was in the movie for five seconds. I legit don't remember how his wife died. It's probably because I was looking uh, not at her breast, but uh, something in the background because there was probably something cool like his NBA Jam arcade machine or something. That's yeah, what that's I was doing. Awesome. Um, yeah, which, I'm trying to steer clear of comments about Alex's wife. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm Alex, to steer clear. your wife is beautiful. Uh, Gorgeous. But we need pay her so she can teach you how to dance. Like, I don't understand how she didn't choreography that whole fucking thing. Was she like, no, I'm a professional. Like, you have to pay me to do that, even though you're my husband. I'll give you a discount. And Alex, you were like, I would. But the thing is, is there's a new edition of Psycho 3 coming out on 4K, and I need to get that instead. And that's where that money went, instead of paying your wife to teach you all how to fucking dance. <laughs> um... But nonetheless, yeah, I had a lot of fun. I liked, uh, I liked, uh, there's certain things that I feel like Alex just put in the movie to show off. He was like, and this is my truck, and this is my motorcycle, and this is my NBA jam. Right? I did, like, the whole motorcycle thing, I was like, uh huh, like, you bastard with your <laughs> new bike. Uh, I see that. We, me and Alex had a whole conversation about his bike, and I was like, uh huh. Wanted to show off his whole little garage for his bike. Yeah, they're like, but that's some of the cool stuff though. Is is actually looking and seeing all the stuff like his uh he there he you know he had his um he had that fucking uh garbage pail kids thing in there. Mm -hmm. That was pretty. So it was kind of cool just seeing. Like I would almost, I really want to see a video that's just Alex doing a, a house tour, right, of his house. And I also want to see a tour of Graffiti Cabin. Which should be yeah, his next project cool. is some some movie involving graffiti cabinet. Yeah, TSC script. They should just call it graffiti crib. cabin. Yeah, let's make graffiti cabin. Yeah, like I said, TSC cribs. Yeah, for real. Uh, it can be about a a guy who uh, kills people with spray paint or something. Now I know why Jay doesn't write movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, me and you, Jerry have had a few cool ideas. That is true. We, we at one point we were discussing some things for for a short film, uh, idea thing. Um, and then life happened. And then life happened. But uh, well, that's that's just me, currently. Like, anyway. Uh, so yeah, th and there will be a link in the description for this movie. You should watch it. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's fun to watch regardless of anything else that we've said 
I also think it'll kind of uh, ramp your creative juices a bit. It kind of makes you want to do some, create something. Like seeing something like this is just like, well, fuck, if he can do it, I can do it. And you really just kind of want to go out there and make something and create something. It makes me want to try to convince Alex to create a porno. It does. Alex, can we talk about this? We'll, we'll drive up there and help you film. Uh, you know, if you need a stunt cock or something, uh, you know, we can have, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but nonetheless, like, it was just really cool, though I am sad that Jerry Fietta did not get killed in this movie. Why was he not murdered for my pleasure in this movie? He Alex. Didn't? He didn't get killed anywhere? No, he showed up for... The graveyard scene, and then I think he is in the he's Halloween the party. party where he's like carving a pumpkin, but then he just disappears. That other white dude gets killed. He's the dummy that gets thrown off the balcony, <laughs> which was hilarious, by the way. I fucking love a good dummy shot. Uh, but yeah, no, Jerry Vietta didn't die, and I'm kind of upset that he didn't get killed. So, all right. <laughs> I just want to point that out but yeah w- watch this movie guys it's an hour it's enjoyable um it has something for everyone if you like if, if you if you like some low budget kills it's got that if you like some cool halloween horror style collectibles it's got tons of that if you like Keith cleavage it's got that uh if you like guys on motorcycles it's got that <laughs> See, he was filming this in jersey in fucking like November, right? Uh, actually, I think he, they did a lot of the filming in October, because I remember him saying like there was an he, like there was an actual Halloween party where they filmed stuff. Uh, like it was actually an Halloween party, and they just kind of asked. Ran- That's why the blonde girl dies, because they were just like, "Hey, do you want to die in this when we're gonna film it?" That's why they like she's just there to die, and that's it. It's because they were actually having a Halloween party. Cause I was sitting there and I was looking at, I was, I was looking at Alex on his Harley and I was just like, you know, motherfucker, you're looking all cool and everything on your Harley, but I know it's gotta be fucking cold. Huh? Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Cause that's the only thing I was thinking when he was riding his Harley is I was like, dude, it's like fucking fall working on winter and damn Isn't Jersey. Isn't that why you wear it's leather gotta... and shit? So you stay warm and toasty? Yeah. He didn't have no leather on. He had a fucking hoodie on, man. A hoodie, oh, jeans, and you and bikers are weird. Shoes. How am I fucking supposed to know? A hoodie, jeans, and tennis shoes, and yeah, that is exactly why you wear leather. <laughs> my uh, Adidas. <laughs> and I was just like, I got man. my sneakers, but I'm not a sneak. He's got to be cold. Yeah, that was. Pretty, I like how they they do this shot of all of them next to this like little creek, and then they do this shot that's at the camp, <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, y'all are definitely there. I loved it. There's so much little shit like that where it's like, it made me think of some of the like really low budget like movies from the 70s and 80s where like you can obviously tell where they, where they cut money except for this. Obviously there was no money to fucking cut. Um, (laughs) It's a little things like that just made me happy because I know Alex was sitting there going, well, you know what? In this one movie, they did this to cut to make it work. We could do that also. <laughs> <clears throat> so, well, either way, does anyone have anything else they want to say about the movie? Nah. I appreciate <clears throat> the effort that went into it. Yeah, it was fucking great, and I, I'm actually really glad that that Alex made it because it definitely made my morning fantastic. Yeah, it it was pretty ballin'. I had actually, it took me like a week to to watch it, because if some of y'all don't know, I live in the Nashville area, and uh, where the the house I live in uh, has AT&T internet, and AT&T Christmas morning had their building fucking blown up uh, by a fucking white domestic terrorist, and uh, we didn't have internet for like fucking three days, so I couldn't watch the fucking thing. And I had to wait, and that sucked because I wanted to watch it. But I did eventually get to see it, and it was a good time. I hope all y'all enjoy it. Uh, makes me want to do this. Uh, before we go, uh, 
It makes me wonder if he had a whole bunch of twisted tea in that RV. <laughs> Shit, maybe. <laughs> um, so before we go, I, I there's two things I want to cover real quick. Uh, Jay, you actually had a top ten of 2020 horror. Yeah. Do you have that list in front of you? I can pull it up in just about ten seconds. Okay. While you do that, I'll go over. I only did a top five okay. because I didn't. I didn't watch really that movie that many movies for 2020 but i want to talk about about it real quick uh number five blood quantum uh obviously talking about these i'm going to kind of go with no spoilers for people who haven't seen it and also because i don't know what movies kenneth has seen as where I'm, i mostly know what jay has seen uh blood quantum was on shutter uh really interesting take on zombies um i'm not a big zombie guy but i really did like that um my second Still haven't watched it Oh, it's super I like good. The the twist that gets revealed like forty minutes into the movie. It feels like it's earlier than that that it gets revealed. Yeah, well, I'm guesstimating. It's been a while since I watched it. That's true. Uh, four Wolf of Snow Hollow. I love Fantastic. werewolf movies. This movie that was just is fun. On my honorable mentions list, but it was it was good. Yeah, it's really fun. I know a lot of people ended up not liking the ending, but I thought the ending was fucking I amazing. The ending was genius. <laughs> Me too. Um, number two, Cleansing Hour. Um, everyone knows I like internet horror, uh, throw internet horror with a little bit of religion, uh, and holy shit, I really, really liked this movie. I thought Wouldn't it was... Wouldn't I tell you to watch that? I don't know. Maybe. Is that the one where the, is that the one where the dude's doing the exorcism on, like, live? Yes. Yes, I told you to watch that shit. Yeah, I that finally watched fucking it. fucking amazing. Uh, I watched it and I watched, uh, in the same day I watched that as, and I watched another internet style horror movie, which was, a uh, followed, which I liked also, um, uh, number two, uh, the dark and the wicked superb, uh, just such fucking good movie. That. So both the cleansing and the dark and the wicked are ones that I did not get. They're not on any of my lists. Cause I never, I didn't have a chance to watch. Oh them. yeah. Cleansing hour is fantastic. And the dark and the wicked is fucking dark and wicked. Yeah, the dark end, that one, man, it, it, whew. Ooh, that scene, yeah, just, Kenneth, yeah, that man, scene. Like the first, the first 40, 45 minutes that I was in it, I was just like, okay, this seems pretty good, I'm entertained, and then when that one fucking part happened, I was like, whoa, oh god, that is fucked up. Yeah, uh, and then <laughs> my number one of the year was Spree, um, which I got a lot of pushback from a few people, because... They were just kind of like, really? And I was like, okay, yes. But here's the thing. I have a bias because I really fucking love internet horror. And I thought Spree was the perfect update to internet horror. It Spree finally, was great. Yeah, it finally got us off the whole Skype, Zoom, webcam thing and moved us into, you know, live video. Kind of like the cleansing <laughs> hour, except like more standard live. Um, See, that's the thing that I liked about the cleansing hour is it's like... You could totally see that type of scenario happening where you've got a person that is doing, you know, whatever the gimmick is or whatever else, doing live shows online for views and making money doing it because people do that now. And so I could totally I, like I could totally see the entire scenario. Well, this, the main part of the synopsis now when it goes off in its tangent, that's just what made it better. But yeah, the cleansing hour was amazing. Yeah, but Spree shows someone who has tried so hard to get internet famous by being a content creator and can't and decides to take it to a new level obviously like obviously people die uh and it just keeps and it just keeps getting fucking crazier and crazier and crazier as the movie fucking goes on and uh Joe Carey's acting is just fantastic Dude, in this guy, movie that guy's going to do really well as he gets older yes uh so it's just so fucking interesting uh so that that, that was my top five uh jay you've actually got a top 10 so let's talk about I this you have a top 10 all right um blood quantum is number 10 we'll just go 10 to uh 10 to 1 here uh blood quantum is number 10 uh, for the same reasons that we already discussed, uh, hash, I don't know how to, if you're just supposed to call this movie alive or hashtag, al hashtag alive, but Korean zombie movie takes place in an apartment building. Um, I really enjoyed that. 
Uh, Becky is number eight. That's a home invasion movie with Kevin James playing a Nazi um, who's after some some. Oh yeah, I just watched that. I just watched that live. They did a live version of it in DC. And he. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was good. And uh, he does a really good job playing a serious role. I I was really and I have a I have an affinity towards home invasion movies too. So that kind of just hit every every level for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Unhinged is number seven. That's uh, Russell Crowe's doing a Michael Douglas impression, um, just so a little good. bit more violent. So good. Uh, Wait, so it's freaky. like falling down? Yeah, that that yeah. was the joke I was making. Oh, uh, Unhinged was um, pretty good. It's about a guy that snaps and targets a lady for a while. So it was just a, a poor attempt at a joke. Uh, Freaky is number six. That's the, the body swap Vince Vaughn movie. I liked um, it. I had a lot of fun. I did really enjoy it. It's from the same guys that did uh, Happy Death Day. Um, but they got an R rating this time, which I think really helped us since it was about a slasher. Um, and really, you should have an R rating when it comes to slashers. Uh, number five is Invisible Man. Uh, that was really good. Uh, number four is His House. That was a Netflix movie about uh, yeah uh, African refugees. Um, I watched that and, the other day, and yeah, I know, and I totally forgot to call you. Man. That's fine. Well, crazy. Yeah, and I can't get into it because it because it involves spoilers. But I have like, uh, the way I saw the movie, I was like, this person did this da 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 da, and and Chelsea was like. No, and I went through this whole fucking diatribe of why I think this way, and she had, like, nothing to really back hers up, and I was like, okay, fuck this, I am getting a second opinion, and so I was like, Jay had it on his list, I'm gonna ask him, Yep. so we, I, we I, have I, to go I, through that. Well, I'm gonna have to rewatch it at some point, but I, uh, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the metaphors and, uh, the parallels it drew, um, for people actually in that situation. Uh, number three, Anything for Jackson, that was fucking phenomenal. A uh, nice twist on the exorcism movie. Yeah, I still need uh, to see that. Number two was The Hunt. Um, satire, um, human hunting, <laughs> human style movie. Uh, Super but it good. Doesn't, it doesn't take sides, and it's funny throughout, and the action is really entertaining. Loved it. Uh, and then uh, number one was The Possessor, uh, the uncut version, uh, or just Possessor, sorry, not The Possessor. Uh, David Cronenberg's kid made a movie. And I absolutely love the concept. I love the execution. I love the brutality of it. It uh, blew me away. Nothing but good things. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, both Jay and Kenneth would like this. Because I saw it a little bit before Jay. I loved it. Uh, And then honorable mentions, uh, VFW. um, A bunch of old veterans have to uh, defend their their VFW place from some drug-addicted kids. Uh, Color Out of Space, Wolf of Snow Hollow, The Mortuary Collection was a Shudder exclusive um, anthology film. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, the Shed is a fun take on vampire movies. Uh, Books of Blood was another anthology based on Clive Barker's uh, books of the same name. I've never read the book, so I don't know the accuracy. So I know that might piss some people off, but just as a movie, I enjoyed it. Uh, we Summon the Darkness, that was fun. Uh, Scare uh-huh. Package is another anthology movie. That's a little bit low budget. but I like uh, I like Scare Package. Uh, we Summon the Darkness is the one with uh, Johnny Knoxville, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that one. That's okay. And then uh, The Wretched was a... Uh, Wretched was good. Supernatural witch movie, and then Spree is also on there. Yeah. Uh, I will say my worst movie of the year, controversial, I know, uh, Color Out of Space fuck that you movie like it, it was okay, god I, awful your complaints are fair complaints you're not just complaining because like oh it has nicholas cage that's dumb like your your actual complaints of the movie are fair it's just what you're saying doesn't bother me <laughs> i hate it when people do that now where it's like you know the, everybody's kind of went in a box of whether they absolutely hate nicholas cage or whether they like nicholas cage and if you are in one of these other boxes you think the other person's ridiculous and it's like Okay, he's just like anybody else. There's some movies that he makes that are entertaining, and some of them suck. Yeah, I've, I've, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. He did a, a movie with one of my favorite Japanese directors, Silent so Sono. To see that. And I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. It's one I'm going to have to watch um, as soon as I can watch it and and, and, and get it. Uh, I will be. I think we may all, all have to watch it and do a review on it. Um, we'll see how that goes. 
Um, but uh, Kenneth, are there any 2020 movies you want to shout out? Um, I, I pretty much have commented when y'all have said them because I haven't watched nearly as many as y'all have. But uh, you know, going back, The Wolf of Snow Hollow that was that was great. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I I I, I kind of knew what was going to happen about midway through it, and so I was just like, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, the the way that the guy reacted to his daughter while at one half of me, you know, as a dad, I was just like, damn, what a piece of shit. And then the other part of me was just thought it was hilarious. Um, but that one was really good. The Dark and the Wicked was fucking amazing. It, it, I mean, I'd probably have to say I'd put that one in my top of all the movies that I watched last year, whether it be, you know, no matter what genre it is. That movie was great. Um, and then I actually would really like to do a show on the cleansing hour. I would like for us to do that. I need I to really, watch that. I really enjoyed that. Was that, that one movie. of the three you suggested when we were planning on our shows? No. I, pro- I don't remember. It's I'm not. not. I, I, I know I said I know that I said at some point in time to both of you guys well, I know I put it in the messenger I was just like hey you know y'all need to watch the cleansing hour it was great yeah so I um th- that was actually the next thing I was gonna bring up is I was going to tell everyone um so we all three picked three movies that we would want to do on the show and for a total of nine movies and. We were going to do kind of a fun thing where we're we're basically nine episodes. Uh, they won't necessarily be back to back to back. We may do something here or there in between. Uh, but we're going to do nine shows where you guys are going to pick the movie out of the list. We're going to put up polls, um, and so and that'll start happening later this week. Um, so I wanted to read the movies off so that everyone can kind of know. So, uh, first up were my three movies that I picked, uh, which is Spree, because I, I think it would be really interesting to get deep into that conversation. Uh, Cat Sick Blues, which is just a, a fucked up weird movie that I think would be fun to talk about. Um, Piercing, which uh, came out a, a year or two ago or something like that. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird interesting movie that I really liked. Um, then we go on to Jay's picks. Jay picked uh, Anything for Jackson, uh, which I haven't seen. Uh, Hereditary, which we've talked about doing for a while now. Oh, that movie fucked me up, and it's going to fuck me up if I watch it again, and that's why that's really why I want to do it. Is uh, I, I, I th- I've gotten some general thoughts from you guys before on that movie, um, but I think with the contrast and how hard it hits me, uh, it'll make for good conversation. Yeah, um, and then his third pick uh, was his movie of 2020, Possessor. Yes. Um, Kenneth's three picks were um, Rosemary's Baby, uh, The Taking of Deborah Logan, and Ravenous. Deborah so, Logan's really good. That movie took me by surprise with how good it was. Yeah, really. Um, so, Jay, have you seen Ravenous? Uh, that's the, uh, probably get the war wrong, but like the Civil War cannibal movie. Maybe not uh, Civil War. Uh, Mexican-American War. There you go. Yeah, it was an older war. But yes, yes, I saw it once. Um, actually, I think, I. funny enough, I watched that the same year I watched Cannibal Holocaust, which is what caused me and Jerry to start this show. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Um, but yeah, those are the nine movies, and y'all are going to be... Uh, we, we will put up all nine y'all, whichever one gets the highest votes will be the one we do next time after that, it'll be the eight movies, uh, highest votes wins and so on, so on, so on until there's obviously only one movie left for us to do. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, exactly. So we're going to, we're going to do that over the next year. Um, and starts, it'll be next episode we do will be one from that list, uh, based on, how y'all voted. We will be covering other things. We'll randomly be like, oh, we want to cover this because one of us saw it and thought, oh, immediately we, we've got to fucking do this. Um, yep. Because that happens or, you know, Horror Coliseum or something like that. Um, and obviously, Kenneth wants to do Cleansing Hour and I'd like to do Cleansing Hour also. Um Especially watch it, apparently. in contrast to um, Spree, because I, I think those two are kind of 
uh, what happens before you if you can't make it, and what happens if you if you make it. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, also on yeah, the same me, thing of those, uh, you have that movie that came out this year called Followed, which is the mm-hmm. same thing. I watched Followed before I did Cleansing Hour. Follow is about a guy who is a YouTuber, um, and they I want to say they get the the snarky kind of annoying YouTuber thing so fucking down and followed. It's not even funny, but they go to a haunted hotel and obviously shit really happens. But it's really good. Uh, what were you gonna say, Kev? I don't remember now. Oh, okay. Fair. Proceed. Um, but yeah, so I think movies like Followed, Spree, and The Cleansing Hour. Uh, oh, take... yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I was just going to say, uh, when we go to do Hereditary, whenever we do it, uh, I have learned new things that I didn't realize about that movie on my first two watches that are now like, it makes me wonder what other kinds of shit that I did not see in that movie that I didn't realize was there. Oh, I've only seen yeah, the movie once. Uh, yeah. Like, okay. So when, uh, here's one for you and I'll just give this away. So that way to give you an idea on a lot of the exterior shots. If you look close, you can see naked cult members in the woods moving towards the house. Interesting. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, like, that's one of the things. And, and when I watched the video about this, they highlighted that area so you can see them. They're there. It's not it's not speculation. They are there. Okay, well, uh, so, yeah, guys, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we will – we've obviously picked the nine movies, but we're going to let y'all pick the order of which ones y'all think are going to be the most interesting to do. <laughs> I kind of feel like Hereditary is going to be a really early pick Um, because obviously it's been one we've talked about doing for a while and I feel like a lot of people know that one um, especially considering like the the Catsick Blues and Piercing are and like Ravenous are maybe lesser known movies compared to some of the other ones Um, you know with Spree and Anything for Jackson being newer movies uh, may still be on fresh people's mind but that's what we're going to do uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to get out of here. It's a quick show of right at a little under an hour. We are done. Thank you to Alex Edwards for uh, creating a film and putting it out into the world. Uh, anyone who does that, bravo fucking O. Um, thank you, Alex, for Big Titty Kitty. For Big Titty Kitty. Um, thank you so much. Uh, everyone who, who worked on that with Alex... Y'all were fantastic. Thank you so much. You did everything you could with what you had, and you pulled it off. And not many people can say they've done that. So, congrats. You made a fucking movie, and we enjoyed it. Um, And that's it. Welcome to 2021, the first episode of 2021. We hope to have a good year uh, and uh, try to get out at least two episodes a month to get back on that schedule. Um, But if not, you know, there's always other sidecast uh underwater kaiju is back uh don't forget you've also got heather and scott over at the friday nightmares putting out episode after episode after episode you can check yeah, out Yeah, those guys are fucking keeping our brand alive <laughs> they really are they picked up the slack uh for for me as i've went through uh tons of shit some of y'all don't know my 11 year relationship ended uh and i got i had to bounce around and do and do a bunch of shit uh, so I got fucked, but either way, we're and back. There was Chelsea, and now yeah, now I'm hanging out with a chick named Chelsea who can like tell you. We'll watch. She watches mostly newer horror movies, especially independent horror movies, and she's like, "This director did this, this, and this," and, and I'm just like, "Yeah, but have you seen The Black Cat from 1934?" <laughs> Perfect contrast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I've been having a blast with her. Um. I gotta figure out what movie we're gonna watch tonight, actually. Um, But, yeah, we're fucking out of here, guys. Welcome to 2021. Thank you uh, for sticking with us. We're we're back. We're alive. We're doing this. Alex McPorno. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Straight up. Any any, any last words for the people? Jay, anything? Uh, No. We gotta plan that interview, though. Oh, yeah, we've got an interview in the works. 
So we got to do yep. that. Jay, Jay, you're in charge of that. Uh, yeah, Kenneth, I just need to know when is a good time for you guys. So uh, can... I mean, if you can get them on their on our normal Sunday night, that would be best because even if like Kenneth has to work early, I'm sure he'll make an exception for that. Yep. Okay. I will take care of it then. So, and you can tell him we try to keep it, you know, under two hours. So as long as he can give us like two to two and a half hours of his time, we're <coughs> golden. Um, none of that needs to be talked about right now. I don't know why. I just went into so much detail. Uh, Kenneth, uh, any last words? Alex, make a porno. Alex, make a porno. Uh, we are out of here, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. Welcome to 2021. Alex, I would subscribe to your OnlyFans. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.